All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Song Park. I'm in a technical support team. Uh, I'm a like a structural engineer. So, like, a, thanks for coming uh, today's training session. Uh, this training session is last training session in 2015. So our technical support team will have uh, more training session in 2016. And also, after this training session, if you have any question, just let us know. Um, send us an uh, email, like a ts at midasuser.com, or send me an uh, email, swpark at midasuser.com. So today's training session is design check and load rating. Uh, before starting our training session, I want to go over go over what I'm going to talk about today. So the first, I'm going to talk about the modeling and design check. Uh, but beforehand, I want to check, can you guys hear my voice very well? Or should I speak up? <clears throat> All right. Give me a second. Uh, can you guys hear me well? All right, perfect. I can say I can see many yeses. All right. Um, so today uh, I'm I'm going to very focus on design check and load ratings. So, but I'm going to open up the one model because we need an example. But uh, beforehand, um, you know, so far when we are talking about the modeling informations, you know, defining section and material properties and geometry of bridge. Uh, we were very focused on the uh, the difficulty of the geometry of bridge, such as straight, highly skewed, highly curved, or how to connect the uh, substructure and superstructure by using uh, elastic link or rigid link. But today we are not gonna cover those details because we are going to do like a design check. But I wanna uh, put emphasis on uh, the fact that uh, modeling information is very important since. Uh, design check uh, is uh, performed based on the modeling information. As you know, when you are modeling a bridge, uh, you're going to create a new sections and material properties, and you might have the, uh, you know, some like your own cross sections, such as, you know, composite, composite steel gutter sections. So from there, when we are doing the design check, uh, those based on the, those, you know, top flange and web flange thickness, uh, you're gonna get the moment of inertia and section, uh, you know, modulus. Uh, those things are, you know, already ready for, uh, you know, design check. So that's why I'm going to talk about the modeling information and how in, how the modeling information influence uh, design check. And then I will talk about the more parameters for design check and load ratings. So after you create a bridge model and you're gonna uh, take a few steps uh, such as, you know, definition of moving load cases and load combinations. After that, you're going to go to design check uh, tab and uh, you're going to, you know, define the more parameters such as lateral torsion of buckling or like a shear stiffener or longitudinal reinforcement uh, so on. And then I will talk about the uh, design check and load ratings. So load rating is, you know, based on design check because H2 LLFR, when you review the H2 LLFR, uh, you might refer to H2 LLFD a lot. So uh, there is uh, some interaction between the design check and load ratings. That's why I'm going to uh, talk about the design check and load rating together. And finally, I will just uh, go over the uh, load rating as well. So basically uh, today's uh, like modeling a model example is a steel composite bridge. So I created this bridge uh, by using the steel composite bridge widget. Um, I want to like uh, talk about the why you have to use a steel composite bridge widget when you are doing the steel composite bridge modeling. Because first, uh, it takes you know shortened times you know compared to other methods such as you know creating node and element uh, you know over than one thousand node and element uh, you know. Like uh, using the steel composite bridge widget is much better than just uh, using the uh, node and element approach. And uh, uh, in terms of steel composite bridge widget, uh, in terms of like a geometry, uh, steel composite bridge widget uh, cover the straight, covered, and multi curve. Most types of geometry can be covered in steel composite bridge widget. And next one is automatic link connections. 
So once you create your bridge, uh, bridge uh, through the state composite bridge widget, you don't really need to consider the uh, link connections such as elastic link or rigid link. It's automatically uh, connected uh, through the state composite bridge widget. And then uh, construction stages. So construction stages are very important uh, while you're doing the design check because you need to know the composite actions before composite or after composite uh, to consider the construction ability. So those construction stages are uh, also, you know, are uh, provided in a uh, three composite bridge widget. So those are like a four important element already, uh, you know, built uh, in, uh, you know, built and uh, you can create your bridge model uh, through the widget. That's why uh, most of our users, uh, most of our, most of our users have used the three composite bridge widget. So. Uh, and also today's uh, modeling example is a steel composite bridge uh, by using the steel composite bridge widget. So uh, more specifically, uh, what uh, what informations uh, you know what modeling informations uh, you know for the design check and load ratings are? Uh, first, uh, when you create a, a bridge, you have the uh, geometry like a layout and section and material property in primary structures such as steel girder and cross frames. So those are already in there. And uh, when you're doing the uh, you know, design check uh, in terms of uh, flexure strength limit, uh, you might find the uh, you know, nominal strengths. So all the like dimensions for the uh, sections you, is already in there. So you don't really need to define uh, one time more when you're doing the design check. And also in terms of dead load, such as barriers or median strips, so secondary, uh, secondary structures ex expressed by dead load. So like those are already uh, defined in state composite bridge widget. So you don't really need to define it when you're doing the design check. And also like you can simulate the composite actions according to the construction stages. So like a construction stage is already in uh, the modeling informations. So, you know, Midas Civil automatically uh, consider the, all the like before composite and after composite uh, stages uh, of the uh, sections. So once you set up those, uh, you know, parameters in modeling informations, you don't really need to, you know, define one more time when you're doing the design check. That's why when you do the design check and uh, when you define the uh, design uh, check parameters, you have only like, you know, seven or eight options uh, you know, to accomplish the design check and also load rating as well. So first of all, um, I just talk about the, like uh, what modeling information is contained uh, for design check. Uh, so let me switch to the Midas Civil and uh, let me show you the, uh, uh, let me demonstrate the, what I have talked right now. So this bridge model is a, a straight, uh, steel composite bridge today. So as you can see on here, there are like a cross frame underneath of the deck. And here is a substructures and here is a superstructures. So first of all, uh, let me just uh, talk about the uh, steel uh, composite girders uh, sections first. So when you double click the section positive, those are under positive moment. That's why I named it like a section positive. And uh, the second uh, girder section is section negative because it is under negative moment. So when you go to a uh, uh, girder section property, uh, you can see those dimensions like a slab uh, effective width and thickness and a top flange width and a thickness web thickness and bottom uh, flange uh, width and thickness. And when you click the show calculation wizard at the bottom, you can see those like areas and a moment of inertia and a section modulus already calculated in here. And you can see on here, this first column, it expressed the uh, like a before composite, uh, which means it's a before deck is pulled uh, on the steel gutters. And when you see the value after, it is after composite. And those, uh, you know, like the numbers already in here. And as you know, those like uh, numbers will be uh, used uh, when you when you are doing the design check uh, by Myra Civil. 
And uh, in terms of the construction stages, at the stage one, only substructure is activated. And on stage two, as you can see, steel girders and cross, beam, uh, cross frames are activated. And stage three dash one, uh, you can see where concrete load is applied on here. So once you create a, your bridge model through the wizard, you don't really need to uh, consider or define the more construction stages for your design check. So all the information is already categorized uh, for the flexure strength limit or shear strength limit. So uh, those are the uh, those information already in the modeling information. So uh, from now on, I'm going to talk about the uh, um, what uh, what else on it uh, for the live load case uh, definition and load combinations. So beforehand. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, flexure strengths and shear strengths cannot be fully determined from the uh, modeling information uh, because, you know, when you are like, you know, calculating a uh, flexure strengths of the uh, gutter sections, uh, you might want to, you might need more information such as uh, like umbrace length to consider the uh, lateral torsional buckling. And also when you uh, use uh, transfer stiffener, I mean the shear stiffeners, uh, it will increase the shear capacity. And also, uh, when the uh, composite section, um, when you are considering the composite sections, you might want to put the shear connectors. All those uh, other like uh, parameters will be defined when you're doing the design check setups. But so in modeling information, you have the very like a basic uh, and a very uh, you know basic stepping stone in there. But when you're doing the design check setups, uh, you know, your design check uh, is, uh, you know, completed. So after you create a bridge model, uh, you have to define the moving load uh, case definitions. Um, I know some of you guys have used the steel composite bridge widget. So in widget, you can define the live load, but in um, like a live load definition in steel composite bridge widget, it is only, you can only define the uh, vehicle information and the traffic line lanes. So outside of wizard, you have to define the moving load case. And then you're going to uh, uh, create a load combinations per H to LRFD. The next thing is uh, other parameters, as I mentioned before. Uh, in order to consider the lateral torsion buckling, you have to uh, define the embrace length and a shear stiffeners and curved bridge info. If your bridge is curved bridge, um, you have to tell the program what is the radius of your curved bridge. And also, when you have the uh, like a negative moment, under negative moment region, the sections uh, will, uh, you know, have the, uh, you know, tensional stress uh, at the, you know, top portions. In that case, you have to define the longitudinal reinforcement. So those parameters uh, will be defined while you are doing the design check setups. So first of all, let me talk about the uh, live load creations. So as I mentioned before, traffic line lanes already defined it uh, in steel composite bridge widget. And also, if you are wondering how to define the traffic line lanes, um, you know, you can just uh, review the other like training sessions before. And also steel composite bridge widget, you can define the vehicle uh, definitions uh, in design. Uh, practice, you're going to use your uh, HM93 uh, trucks or HM93 tandems. And uh, when you're doing the like load ratings, uh, you're going to use a uh, permit trucks. And then finally, you're going to uh, define the moving load cases uh, on your own. So let me demonstrate uh, this one and uh, what types of what types of vehicles we have in Mida Civils. So from here, when you want to define the uh, moving load cases, go to load tab and go to moving load. And you can see the moving load code. First, you might want to choose H to LRFD on here. And so here, I already defined the uh, traffic line lanes on here. And you can visualize your traffic line lane uh, on model view on here. When you go to a uh, tree menu, 
and you can find a uh, moving load analysis and you can find the uh, traffic line lanes. Double click this one and uh, here is a uh, traffic line lane information in here. And uh, right click and I click the display. You can see where your traffic line lane is located on the deck. And the vehicles, I already defined the design truck, two design trucks. Uh, the first one is HL93 tandem and the second one is HL93 uh, trucks. So once you go to uh, add standard, uh, this one is our library. Uh, we have the uh, bunch of uh, vehicle information in our library. As you can see, uh, when you uh, follow the H2 LLFD, you have the design trucks, uh, HN93 uh, trucks, HN93 tendons. And if you're doing the uh, load rating, you might want to use uh, permit trucks, right? So here also we have the uh, H2 types uh, uh, permit trucks. But uh, also here you can find a uh, you know difference uh, you know like a DOT's uh, load information on here. But uh, more importantly, if you cannot find your like a design trucks or your own permit trucks in our library, you can also define your own trucks uh, at the add user defined it. Click this one, and as you can see on here. Truck and lane is for the design trucks because you can define the lane load at the same time. But the permit truck, you can also define the, your own permit truck on here. And, and about the moving load case, you can see on here, I already defined the moving load case. As you can see here, you can uh, modify the multiple presence factors. And here, one, uh, moving load case, you have the you can have the multiple subload cases according to the your design trucks. So at the very bottom, you can find an add button on here. Click add, and you can find the vehicle class. So you can uh, choose HL ninety three tandems, and then uh, you can find the uh, maximum number of loaded lanes on here. If your lane is two, you can enter the two on here. And you don't forget, um, you have to move this uh, lane information onto the uh, selected lanes. And I click OK. You can find the uh, three uh, subload cases on here. But today I'm going to use a design uh, trucks, a tandem, a HM93 tandem, and a HM93 uh, trucks. So, uh, we, uh, you know, create a bridge model, and there is a lot of information in modeling information. And then we define the live load, um, you know, traffic line lanes and vehicles already uh, defined it in steel composite bridge wizard. And then outside of the steel composite bridge wizard, you can define your own moving load case. So I just show you the, uh, you know, uh, you know, define the uh, moving load case for uh, design check practice, but you can also uh, define the moving load case for your uh, load rating case. The next step is you have to create a, your own like a load combinations. But in Mida Civil, we provide uh, auto generation uh, per H2 LRFD12. So uh, here is the, uh, this one is a load combination dialog box. Uh, let me switch to the Mida Civil and I'll show you how to create your load combinations. So after you define the moving load case, and I'll go to Wizard tab, and you can find the uh, load combination on here, right? So beforehand, uh, this uh, design check is for uh, gutter sections, but also in Mida Civil, you can uh, you know, do the design check for the steel, I mean the uh, cross frame. So this one also can be, uh, you know, uh, you know, possibly, uh, you know, defined it as a like a auto generation on here. So once you click the auto generation at the bottom, you can see this dialog box, and the tell the program what types of load um, the design code are you gonna use. So today I'm going to use the H2 LRFD12, and you can see the load vectors at here, right? So here we provide uh, three cases. If you wanna wanna use the for these as a maximum uh, load vectors, you can just choose this one. And if you wanna just select the minimum load vectors, you can choose 
uh, mean, like a 0.9, uh, a 0 0.09. And if you want to generate the both of cases, you can just uh, select the both on here. But today, I only use the max. And again, this one is for the cross frame design check. So let me just uh, briefly go over the how you can check the, your cross frame uh, design check. So here, um, once you set up those parameters and click OK, you can see those load combinations. So also you can uh, change the like uh, scale factors on here, because if you use uh, like uh, you know, if you have a uh, dis distribution factors, you can just uh, apply your dis uh, distribution factors on here. Uh, for the moving load case, I mean the live load. <clears throat> so uh, from now on, I'm going to show you how to do the like cross frame design check. So that is under design tab, and you can see the steel design. And here, steel code is H2 LRFD12. And uh, you know those like you know. Um, like a strength re a reduction factors, uh, you can just uh, modify it by yourself, or you can just follow the uh, H2 LLFD12 code. And you can also define the uh, like uh, steel like a material in here, but you already uh, defined your uh, steel material properties uh, before, so you don't really need to touch down this uh, dialog box. And the and then at the um, you know bottom. You can see the steel code check, right? So click this one, and uh, MITAC will automatically uh, do the design check for you on here. And uh, if you want to see more detailed information about the uh, cross frame uh, steel design check, you can uh, check on this box and click the graphic at the very bottom. You can see those uh, like uh, design uh, you know report on here. So from here, uh, uh, let me give you one example. Because uh, we also in steel design check, we also have the optimized steel uh, material property functions. So as you can see on here, uh, if you don't like uh, this steel material properties or steel uh, section property, if you think this one is so small to satisfy your design check, you can check on this box and click change. And you can see this dialog box. And you can uh, you know, click the uh, search satisfied section. You can uh, might as well uh, provide uh, some like you know, optimized uh, steel sections for you. And you can change this box. Uh, you can change uh, to like you know other sections, and uh, you know apply that onto your you know model. And uh, you can uh, redo the design check, and you can get these some um, you know informations from there. So like a steel design check, uh, you can do the optimized you know steel uh, section property uh, functions, and also you can get the uh, steel design check report uh, from here at the very bottom when you click the. Uh, Graphic, uh, you can get the uh, you know checking result on here, and here also provide why this one is uh, okay. Uh, all those equations is ready for you. Uh, and then uh, we also provide a uh, peer cap design and peer column designs. So once you put the steel reinforcement uh, in the steel uh, peer columns or peer cap, or if you put the post uh, post tension tendon, you can do the design check. So you have beforehand you have to create a, your uh, you know like a load combinations on here under concrete design tab, and then. When the uh, analysis design check, as same as the steel design code check, 
or you can get the uh, result values. But today uh, we have uh, interest in the uh, in a gutter section uh, design check. So this one is the same way. You can go to uh, like auto generation, click auto generation icon, and I'll uh, tell the program what types of design code are you gonna use, and uh, you know uh, which load factor are you, which load factor are you gonna use, max, mean, or both. So I already uh, created those load combinations on here. So, so far we uh, created a bridge model and a live load, we defined the live load case, and then we uh, create our load combinations per H2 LLF D12. So next one is uh, we have to define the uh, more parameters to accomplish the design check. So the first thing is design materials. So th in this design material dialog box, uh, you can define the hybrid factors when you have the different uh, steel uh, material property, steel plate gutter uh, material property at the top flange, web, or bottom flange. You can tell the program uh, top flange is I'm going to use this uh, steel material property and a web I'm going to use this uh, steel material properties and uh, might as will automatically calculate the hybrid factors for you and also in design material dialog box uh, you can define that you can tell the program what types of uh, rebar material property are you going to use are you going to use a grade uh, C6000 uh, or C4000 uh, you know, and so on and also you can define the longitudinal reinforcement in order to consider the uh, tension and stress uh, when the sections are under um, negative moment. And uh, shear stiffness and embrace length and a shear connectors and uh, fatigue parameters and curved bridge information. So if you define the, those uh, seven parameters, you can accomplish the design check. So let me go over this one, uh, those like parameters one by one. So uh, when you're doing the, uh, when you uh, do the design check setups, you have to go to design tab and you can find the composite design. This one is for the uh, steel composite, uh, steel composite bridge, uh, only for the uh, gutter sections. But as I mentioned before, you can do the design check for the cross frame and peer cap and peer columns as well. So once you click the design material, you can see this dialog box. So here, click the uh, gutter sections, uh, gutter material property on here, and check on the hybrid factors in order to consider the hybrid factors. And you can find a dot, dot, dot box on here. Click, click this box, and you can tell the program um, which grade, which steel grade are you gonna use for the top flange, and bottom flange and web. Also at the very bottom, uh, you can find like, uh, you know, reinforcement sections. So you can uh, tell the program what grade, what steel grade are you gonna use for the steel reinforcement. So if you have the grade six, uh, 60, you can tell the program grade 60 and uh, for the grade of sub rebar, if you want to use the 50, you can just tell the program, just create a 50 on here. So how you can uh, define the longitudinal reinforcement? In other words, how you can put the steel rebar on the slab portions. So again, uh, this one is for, um, you know, to resist the tension and stress around the slab portion under negative movement, steel rebar info is added onto slab. So as you can see on here, uh, around, the, uh, around the support area, you can find the uh, negative moment. And you know, the concrete cannot resist to the uh, tension and stress, so you have to put the uh, steel reinforcement at the, sub, uh, at the slab portions. So uh, this one can be uh, find at the uh, longitudinal reinforcement. <laughs> Click this longitudinal reinforcement icon and uh, I already uh, you know separate the sections. Uh, one, the first one 
is a section under positive moment and a second one is a section uh, for negative moment. And click the section negative moment and from here you can uh, see the slab portion this uh, like a box is a, a slab. Uh, so this one is effective width and this one is a thickness. And on your right hand side you can find the uh, like a reference line and reference uh, line uh, Y and reference line uh, Z. So <clears throat> Uh, you just uh, tell the program, uh, you know, what is the like a clearance uh, for this reinforcement uh, by uh, on the uh, reference Y and Z, and you're gonna tell the program how many reinforcement are you gonna use on here, and what is the spacing between the rebar, and you can tell the program what is the diameter, is it number three or number four, and a part two, uh, this part means, uh, you know, like a Generally, in my civil, when you see the part two, this one is concrete section, and a part one is steel sections. And once you define all those parameters and click add and hit apply, you can see those, uh, you know, steel rebar reinforcement, steel rebar on here. And uh, the good thing about the uh, this uh, dial dialog box is once you uh, define the uh, this steel reinforcement information on the slab portions you can copy this information to the other sections. So in here, we have only one, like a, you know, like a negative moment sections, but if you have a three or four spans, you might have a different, you might have a more like a sections under negative moment regions. In that case, uh, at the very bottom, you can find a copy reinforcement to button or like icon on here, click this icon and you know, like uh, move the your like uh, you know uh, section uh, to the uh, selected section list uh, and then click OK. Uh, you can find the all the like a steel reinforcement information is copied to the uh, you know other uh, you know selected uh, section. Uh, I mean the, the sections under like uh, selected section list. And next one is a shear stiffener. Uh, in other words, it is a transverse stiffener. So <clears throat> you can add a transverse stiffener to either just one side of the web or both sides. And uh, in Midas Civil, we provide a shape uh, such as T and flat. So you can see on here, the first case is if you want to put the transverse stiffener on both sides, you can do that in Midas Civil. And also, if you want to put the just a shear stiffener on one side, you can also uh, do that. Uh, let me just demonstrate this part, uh, switching to the Midas Civil. So you can find a transfer stiffener on here, right? Click this one. And also, you can find the uh, section positive and section negative again. So check on this box. You can find a transfer stiffener on here. Check on web. Because uh, a shear stiffener will be uh, embedded uh, around the uh, web, right? And check on this web box and I click the, this dot 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 box to define the uh, which uh, shape, which um, like uh, you know transfer stiffener shape are you gonna use? So here, if you wanna use a flat, uh, you can just uh, tell the program I'm going to use a flat. And the transfer stiffener, as I mentioned before you can uh, define it just one stiffener or two stiffeners. So if you want to make it two stiffener, just uh, check on the, uh, select this two stiffener, and you can find the FY. This one is uh, um, like, uh, as you can see on here, once you click the dot 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 box, uh, among the our like library, you can uh, find the uh, steel like uh, material properties on here. And pitch is a spacing between the web, uh, between the like uh, you know like a transfer stiffener, and a B is base base for the uh, steel um, transfer stiffener uh, sections, and T is the like a thickness of the uh, transfer uh, stiffener. Uh, next one is shear connectors. So in order to have a you know a perfect like a composite sections you might want to put the shear connectors 
So here, uh, this one, this picture is examples. Uh, this one has uh, three uh, shear connectors uh, in a row. Uh, and uh, this one is from the Myra Civil Design Guidebook, as you can see on here. The pitch is just a spacing between the, uh, you know, shear connectors uh, along with the longitudinal directions. And you can tell the program how many uh, number of shear connectors, shear connectors are you going to use in a law. And you can also tell the program what is the spacing between the shear connectors uh, with, the, uh, with the transverse directions. And also, you, you have to tell the program what is the height of the shear connectors and uh, diameter, and what is the strength of the uh, shear connectors. So let me switch it to the Myra Civil on here. So under like a design check, you can find the uh, shear connectors on here. So click this shear connectors. And as you can see on here, you have the uh, different categories, and you have to select it uh, among those options. And the pitch. Uh, you're gonna, you know, the spacing between the shear connectors and a height. Uh, tell the program uh, what is the height of the uh, shear connectors, and also you can see the fit, uh, this length unit, right? But if you want to use it as an inch, you can just instantly change the length unit as an inch on here. And what is the diameter of the shear connectors, and what is the strength of the uh, shear connectors? And you have to tell the program uh, deck overhang load. So this F, the capital F, uh, represent the uh, dis distributed force. As you can, as you you know refer to these pictures, uh, you can see the like those two F uh, force uh, create a, a moment. So you can tell the program what is the F F and the uh, Myra Civil automatically calculate the uh, the moment for you. And the P is uh, like a concentri concentrated force. And also you have to tell the program what is the eccentricity of overhang load. And you can see the angle alpha on here. But the uh, as you can see, like a web uh, height is already, uh, you already defined in the section properties. And if you just tell the program what is the eccentricity of the overhang, um, uh, might as well automatically calculate the, those uh, angle alpha. And uh, those one will be applied to the to get the uh, F1, uh, which is F times tangent alpha, and a P1 uh, equals uh, P times tangent alpha. And those, uh, you know, like calculation will be uh, done uh, by Myra Civil. So that overhead load, you have to tell the program what is the distributed load, uh, force and concentrated force, and what is the eccentricity of the overhead load. So once you go to deck overhang load, you can find the distributed force and concentrated force and what is eccentricity of the overhang load. Other like calculation will be done by Myra Civil. And then uh, I want to talk about the, what is the design check output. First, uh, you can see you can uh, get the big pictures. What is you can get the uh, you know ideas uh, span by span. So as you can see on this uh, span research graph, you can see the demand versus capacity graph. So this green line, green line represent the uh, capacity, and the red line represent the uh, demand. So you can get the uh, you know where um, which one, which like uh, a location uh, cannot uh, satisfy the design uh, H2 LLFD uh, you know provisions. You can check. Uh, your design check values uh, under like a span research graph. And also, if you want to see the more specific numbers, you can go to research tables. And also here, we provide a strength, serviceability, and constructionability, and fatigue limit. So those like uh, tables are like provided for you uh, to see more like uh, details. And then uh, you might find uh, some like, uh, you know, red letters on here which means it is not good. It is not satisfied with H2 LLFD. So in that case, if you want to see more detailed information, such as equations and why this one is not good, um, you can extract a design Excel report.
So let me switch to the uh, my receiver on here. So beforehand, you also have to tell the program uh, what is the gutter sections, what element is uh, under gutter uh, sections, uh, which is possible in the design position on here. Once you click this one, and uh, go to group tab and uh, double click the gutter and uh, you have to click the apply on here because uh, you know by uh, define the uh, design positions uh, my receiver will recognize oh you're gonna do the like gutter sections design check on here so don't forget to uh, define the uh, design position on here again uh, go to uh, tree menu and uh, go to group tab and uh, double click the gutter icon uh, you can uh, select the whole uh, gutter uh, element and then you can click apply on here. So as I mentioned before, you can check your uh, demand versus uh, capacity graph uh, in the MITRE civil. So this one shows uh, like a strength uh, flexor, uh, you know, positive and negative moment. And you can also check the uh, shear on here. So again, this green line represents the uh, like capacity, and the red line represents the uh, demand. Also, you can check your design output uh, with the uh, table information on here. So let's just go over the strength limit state on here uh, in terms of lecture. Click this one. So you can see the like uh, you know like a uh, red letters on here, right? And uh, it says NG, which is not good, right? In that case, if you want to see more detailed informations, uh, you can go to uh, you know Excel report. Once you click this one, you're gonna get the uh, Excel report output. So beforehand, you have to tell the program uh, which element are you gonna. Uh, you know, you have interest on extracting the uh, Excel report. So go to position for design output. And just uh, okay. Let's say uh, if you have the uh, if you want to extract the uh, design uh, Excel report uh, in terms of element number 400, 437, uh, you can just enter the 400, 437 on this table, or you can just uh, go to model view. And enter the uh, 437 on the uh, element box. And click enter. And you can uh, see the red highlighted line on here. And click apply. Uh, you uh, Once you click apply on here, uh, you tell the program I'm going to extract the design Excel report in terms of element number 437. So you can find the uh, Excel report icon on here. Click this one and save as. And you're gonna tell the program uh, which unit uh, system are you gonna use, uh, US or SI unit. And I'm going to use a US unit on here. So it takes a little bit time.
So uh, while uh, generating uh, Excel report, I will just uh, do the Q&A. So what are the steel beam elements by steel uh, widget beam or shell element? Oh, so this um, this model is uh, you know done by a uh, beam element only. So still um, in uh, my receiver, we don't provide a design check for the shell element. So I got one more question. Uh, what are the difference between the negative and positive composite sections? So um, as I mentioned before, the composite sections for section negative is I just assumed the like um, the like a section negative section is under negative moment, and positive section positive is under positive moment. So as you can see on here, here is a design Excel report. So you can see the basic like the parameters, I mean the basic information about the, uh, you know, um, like the section properties um, on here. And once you go down and you can find the equations on here, and this one says okay, because uh, it is satisfied with a design code. And you can see here is NG, which means not good. Uh, this one does not satisfy uh, with uh, the design, uh, you know, H2 LLF D12. So that's why it has NG on here. So you can see more like detail, detailed information when you're extracting design, I mean the Excel report uh, under like a design check. So <clears throat> what do we have uh, left is uh, uh, we have to cover the uh, load rating part, but the let me go go to like a rating uh, parameters de uh, definitions on here. As you can see on here, the is the almost same as it, same as the design check parameters, such as longitudinal uh, reinforcement and uh, transfers uh, reinforce uh, transfer stiffener and embrace lengths and fatigue parameters and curved bridge information. So those are, you know, already you, you know, understand how to, you know, define those parameters in MITA civils. But uh, about the load rating, we have the uh, rating group setting. Because uh, rating, uh, for the rating, uh, you might have interest on the, uh, you know, girders, right? So check on this box. It is the same as the design position for the design check. So in like a design check, when you are doing the design um, design positions in design check, you tell the program um, like uh, tell the program I'm going to use the gutter sections for design check. And uh, this one is the same as the design uh, lo in load rating case. Uh, it is a different name, but the uh, the process is the same. So you can see the bridge rating group setting. So you just check on the gutter and uh, click add, and you can see the like uh, you know gutter sections are defined it and are used for the uh, load rating practice. So and uh, other like a. Uh, you know, another parameters you have to define for the load rating case um, is uh, defined rating case. So let me switch to the uh, slide. 
So this one is a steel composite bridge, uh, you know, wedding factors uh, equations on here. So as you can see on here, you can see the like a load factors on here. You can use a max or mean, or you can use a both of them. So those you can just refer to the like a load factors on here. Uh, you can find uh, this information in a design guide books. And if you want to change those like load factors, you can do that on here. And also at the very bottom, you can see the evaluation live load models. So if you want to just go with a design live load, you can just check on this uh, design live load uh, selections. And if you want to do more deeper uh, analysis, uh, you can uh, select the legal load and permit load. So let me switch to the Mida Civil one here. So as you can see here, uh, once you click the DC after, and if you want to change the load case, load cases, you can just uh, select this uh, drop box and uh, tell the program uh, DC after is for the you know like other load cases. But usually when you you know create a, your bridge model through the wizard, you don't really need to change those stuff. So again, this load case is for the uh, when you're doing the, you know, when you create a your bridge model uh, manually, uh, you you have to tell the program what is the load cases in each case. So we provide a service limit state and strength limit state and a fatigue limit state. So check on this box. Uh, sorry, select this service limit state and tell the program. Uh, what moving load case are you going to use for the load a uh, load rating case because uh, Design check practice you're going to use your design trucks, but sometimes uh, When you do the like load rating you're going to use a permit uh, trucks So in that case you have to create a another uh, moving load case uh, You know like a uh, case uh, for the uh, you know permit trucks and then you have to uh, select the uh, proper moving load case uh, for the uh, load rating case uh, for the uh, you know load rating uh, practice, and then uh, again uh, you have to tell the program uh, you know what is the uh, you know when uh, you're gonna use a design live load or legal load and a permit load, and then click add at the very bottom, and uh, MetaSiv automatically uh, you know like uh, you know uh, create a a load rating, uh, you know, factor case for you. And then it is the same as the design check. So you can click the perform rating design on here uh, to run the analysis for the uh, load rating, load rating analysis. And also you can uh, see the like load rating. Um, Excel report, you can extract the uh, load rating Excel report on here. Uh, I already made a uh, one load rating uh, Excel report on here. Let me just open that up. And it is a different format with a design check, but the uh, you can get more information by extracting load rating uh, Excel report on here. So once you set up the, all the parameters for the design check and load ratings, uh, you can easily review the uh, your like a design check wizard and a load rating outputs by using the table informations. And if you want to see more details, you can extract the uh, Excel report. So those are, are available in Midas Civil. So I know like a load rating part, I just uh, you know cover a little bit, but the uh, I think the load rating is the almost same as the design check. Uh, but I told you uh, different like parameters to accomplish the uh, load rating uh, practice. So <clears throat> this is uh, almost done. Uh, for the uh, training sessions, so I can see the uh, some of the questions. Oh, again, uh, right after uh, this training session, I will shoot you an email uh, for the uh, one PDH credit uh, certifications. 
So if you guys have uh, some problem with opening up the PDF file, just let us know. And I know you guys have, uh, some of you guys have uh, questions. I will just, uh, you know, follow you up uh, after these training sessions because we have only five minutes right now. It's very hard to answer the, all of the questions. So, but I will just follow you up, uh, you know, just uh, sending an email about your questions. Uh, thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'll see you uh, next year. Thank you. I'm not sure if I'm going to